two, one, go. Three, two, one. First thing that came into my mind when you said Gary. that <laughs> was seven <laughs> minutes of burpees, bro. I guess I don't know why I still think about that stuff. You got your bright light on there on the top of your phone. Thanks. Folks, I'm starting to start a show here. All right. This okay. All right. I'm trying, doing the best I can. <laughs> Golly. I'm, I'm not even slave gonna, driver I'm over not, here. I'm not even going to cut that out. I'm just going <laughs> to let everybody know what I got to deal with when I'm doing all this stuff. <laughs> He's a tech guy, not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, what you got for us this week? Oh, boy. Uh, okay. Weekly update show, 21 February 2020. All right. So I don't have a really uh, pithy, um, you know, academic quote, but it's definitely going to apply to the um, to the show. So pay no attention to that man behind the curtain, says the great and powerful Oz. This show basically is going to be about um, looking behind the curtain of the S and P 500, which is the C fund. Um, so I got, I got to tell everybody what I was saying before Yeah, I want Jerry never tells me the quote to right before the show. Yeah. Um, anyway, when he said the quote, that, that is my favorite quote from my time in the government. And <laughs> if I offend anybody that listens to our podcast, I apologize. You won't offend anybody. <laughs> I, I hope. If I do offend you, we probably will can't be friends. But I used to say that to people after I had been in the government for like, you know, 15 plus years or whatever. I was like, the biggest mistake I ever made was looking behind the curtain. Once I did, I was so sad. I was like, oh, this is the people yeah. and the things that are running in it. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, that's just, you know, a disgruntled retiree talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not disgruntled to, anymore, though. No, because you're a retiree. Exactly. Mm. All right, on to the I show. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But anyway. Not yet. Not yet. We're close, though. Bingo. Okay, so the market this week. Down, down, down. Down, down, Jerry, down. tell me it's not so. Holy, holy mackerel, right? At first glance, it looks like a very rough week for the, the entire TSP, right? Not just for the stock funds, but the uh, F fund was also down over half a point. Does that mean, you know, we should bail into the G fund? Does it mean it's the end of the end for the stock funds and TSP? My short answer to that question is no. Um, we're going to get into all that stuff in this week's edition of the weekly update newsletter. So I'm not going to get into all that in the show. Uh, this show is going to be about something very different. So we've talked a lot about JC Peretz on the show before. Okay, He's one of my favorite technical analysts. And I highly recommend his site. It's called allstarcharts.com. A-L-L-S-T-A-R-C-H-A-R-T-S dot com. So this week, JC did a post <clears throat> explaining why the market high in February 2021 is much different than the top was in February 2020. Okay? So that's why his, his article is called Happy Anniversary to the Top of the Market, right? One Year Anniversary. It's well worth the read. Uh, I don't know why I put it as a link on this because you can't, <laughs> can't link tap to it. it. But One of these days I'll get around to putting those links in the YouTube yeah. videos and you guys can actually yeah. click the link. Yeah, yeah. So when you just Google JC Peretz or, or go, to, go to his site and uh, it's, it was February 19th is where, when he did that post. Um, so this, this show is hitting, it's going to hit a similar topic. Okay. So, by looking behind the curtain uh, of, of the S&P 500, of the market, basically, we're going to be able to see what was driving the February 2020 high versus what's driving the current high and use that perspective to make TSP reallocation decisions going forward. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is get a little bit of perspective. Okay? So here is... 15-year C fund uh, monthly chart. Okay. I did it as a line instead of a candlestick because it's a little bit easier to see the, the further out you go. So this is the, the current, my current expected five wave uh, Elliott wave count. Go with the pen. Okay. One, two, let me just do this real quick for you. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
gives us the, the uh, a three and then four five for the for the three. Then the big four, and now we're in this five leg. Okay, that's where we are right now. Right. So, if we take a look at at this chart, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about about it. This is a 35%, 34-35% drop. Nope, I'm sorry. This was back in 09. This was a 55% drop. It was a huge move down. Okay. Then we had the one, two, three, four. This four leg was a 34% drop. 34% drop in your if, if you were 100 percent invested in the C fund. The interesting thing here is that the volume right here, if you the black is the up volume, right? Up volume right there. You don't see that level of up volume until like back here at the beginning of the move higher. Right? It's it's uh this is the beginning of a move higher. That that level of up volume. It it exploded off that, that low at the bottom of the four, and it's the beginning of a move higher. Okay. And we've seen it. We've seen a pretty good move so far in wave five. Technically, wave five should be a percentage basis the same as move one uh move one. So we might we 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 ought to see it something something like up there. This is the long-term perspective. So the, at, at the end of the day, the reason I wanted to put up this chart was two, two things. Big volume is telling us that this, this move, this five leg is, is going to move higher from here from, from the perspective of this chart. Only because the last time we saw it was, it was the very beginning of the move, okay, back in 2009. The second thing is that we are in a five leg. So out, out of uh, an abundance of caution, I'm just going to say, while I'm pretty bullish about this whole thing, at some point, we're going to get to the five that began back here in 2009. And once we get there, we're going to have a big correction. But we're definitely not there yet. Okay, so let's just leave... That one at that. We're not there yet. So what we're going to do next is kind of drill down into this piece right here. Because that's really where our reallocation decisions kind of matter. Okay. This is the 18 month of the C fund. So all I did was expand out the five leg from the last chart. So this section right here is what you're looking at right now, okay? We could say that this is the four right there, right? This five, this fifth leg is playing out in five legs, okay? We got one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, right? This is gonna be the one. Then we got A, B, C, this is gonna be two. So ideally, we keep going up, we get a three, and it keeps going. Okay. As long, right now, we have the channels drawn. So we want to see the one here, the ABC correction to the two. The three should put us up here somewhere. The four should get us back down here somewhere, and the five is going to be up there somewhere. So I'm not saying that the market is going to go higher necessarily from here. What I'm saying is the bias the, the the bias has to be bullish. So we saw a lot of a lot of stuff this week uh in Facebook about uh the market's at all-time highs and and it should be rolling over and all kinds of sort of negative um, right, sky's falling. Sky's falling kind of stuff. And and I, I get that because we're a little bit above the prior high from 2020. Um, but 
I don't think my reading of the Elliott wave and what we're going to get into next supports that we are at a, a, a high right now. I think what we're what we're seeing is the beginning of a big move higher. Right. Uh, and we're going to get into why, um, and that's actually the point of pulling back the curtain because uh, we're going to show the the underlying sectors within the S&P 500, the C fund, that uh, what they looked like back in February 2020 and what they look like now. What they look like now, yeah. And it's drastically different. Right, and, and it, it's important for folks to realize that the S&P 500 is made up of sectors, right? Yes, 11 so, sectors. Yep. And a lot of times there are three or four or five of those sectors that are are, are pushing it higher, right? Right. And then there's times that there's four or five that are pulling it down, right? So not just looking at the whole S&P 500, but being able to break out these sectors. Right. So for us in TSP, you don't get that option, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, 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 the C fund is the S&P 500. Yeah. That, that's as deep as you can go. Yeah. But what I mean is like you using this to kind of dig in deeper to see why this looks different than that. Yeah. Because if you just look at the S&P 500 as a whole, it's hard to see that. You can't see it. Right. It's it's right. like, well, this looks just like that. It, it does look just you like gotta that. You got to look behind you the gotta curtain. Look, you got to pull behind the curtain. Let's yeah. go look behind yeah. the curtain. Let's look behind the curtain. Okay. Here you go. Welcome to Behind the Curtain. <laughs> there are Can 11... Can we do a podcast <laughs> called Behind the Curtain? <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> we might have to do it anonymously. <laughs> Okay, there are 11 sectors uh, in the S&P 500. And you can see them broken down here. This, this is off the, the main page of stock charts. You don't need to log in to see it. Uh, you, could, you could pull it up. Anybody can pull it up. And each one of them corresponds to an ETF, which is great because you could trade any of those individual sectors. Which okay. is what I try to do on my, in my Fidelity account. Lots, lots about that later, but uh, so th this particular chart, okay, it's it's arranged in order of one year performance. So I I did the one year on the uh, on the drop down, and you can see the, the the tech sector as you as you would expect, right? Because this is one year performance, um, and we ran it Friday afternoon, so February nineteenth. So this is basically the uh, the top, so February, right around this week, was the top before the coronavirus uh, rollover. So we are at the top. That's why JC wrote that article. Um, we are at the top of we're, we're the same one exactly one year from the top of uh, right before coronavirus. So you would expect that you're going to see tech, right, absolutely led the way, and that's going to be a pretty cool chart to take a look at. Um, Consumer discretionaries, communications, whatever you can you can kind of read down the list. <clears throat> Utilities, energy, and real estate were the bottom uh, sectors over the past year. Okay, so the the charts that we're going to look at are five years. Okay, so that's going to enable us to see which sectors were moving the index at the top of wave three versus the beginning of wave five. Okay. Because last year we were at the top of wave three this year. We're at the beginning of wave five. Okay. Let me go back and look at that. Show you that one more time. Last year we were at the top of wave three. This year we are at, Relatively speaking, the beginning of wave five. Does that make sense? It does to me. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's a huge, it's a huge deal, right? Because we were we were at two, and we had a huge move to the top of wave three. Which is what we should expect from four to five. It, it's not going to be that, that long, long in right, time in right. terms of time, but it'll it'll be big. Um, and we, and we had the, a, a pretty very abrupt four, which a thirty a thirty five percent. Retracement is fine for four. It, the time frame didn't didn't last very long, but the percentage decline is fine. Um, five is going to take us up. You know, who who knows how far? We don't have a crystal ball, but I think what we're going to show for the over the rest of the presentation 
definitely supports that we are, you know, in the beginning stages of a of a big run higher, as as opposed to something that is is going to like, you know, roll over right there. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go through these kind of quick because I got 11 slides and I just want to uh, the the way that that I I did this in the presentation is alphabetical. So it's not the same. This this here is is uh, it's it's by performance. When I when I did it on my spreadsheet, it was by it was alphabetical. So it's fine. Materials, okay. The the XLB is is the materials section of the S and P five hundred. Okay, that's non ferrous metals, aluminum. Specialty chemicals, gold mining, other kinds of mining, steel, all that kind of stuff, okay? Relatively flat as the S&P was going up. Investment started waning versus the S&P 500 around this top here, which we know was the three. Because this, this correction here was the four and then the five, and this was the actual three. Right, so <clears throat> what I'm saying is, materials sort of gave us a leading indicator that the market was getting ready to roll over. Okay, but once the four leg happened, now materials are in line with price. Okay, it's driving us higher, and these are big, big thing. You know, aluminum. Chemicals, gold mining, steel, m mining in general. It's big, big money stuff is what we're talking about, okay? This is driving the market higher. Those are the kinds of things that are driving the market higher, which is why they were going down when the market was going sideways, consolidating, right? That's materials. Communication services is kind of crazy, so... Uh, I think I'm going to kind of bail on that, but it's the same kind <laughs> of idea. You get the general trend here. It's going up as the price is going up, right? It's going down as as the, the price is going sideways, but to down. And it's going up again as the price starts going up. But it's hard to see, so I'm not going to deal with it. It almost looks like a wavelength for communication. Yeah, I got it, right? Um, okay, energy. Energy is pretty kind of actually very interesting. <clears throat> so... Right about here, it started rolling over. So you got you got energy doing a, a big dip. Okay, XLE is the energy energy indicator. It's exploration, production, coal, oil and gas, oil equipment, pipelines, and the and the interesting thing about this is we, there's been all this talk about pipelines, right? And how the new administration, you know, clamped down on the pipelines. And, and given XLE is not pipelines. Uh, that index would look much different than this, but it, it's it is part there. of it. It's in yeah. there, right? But what we see here, I'm not doing it. What we see right here. The pin is acting up. Pin's acting up. There we go. We got it. What we see right there, okay? We have we got the low in October, and we have a, a push higher, and then we have an ABC correction. Right? You got one A B C. Then we had a big breakout right here. I'm I'm energy's doing this. There's there's no doubt about it. I mean if I if I had some extra money to, to toss in there, I would look at putting it in the XLE. You got a so yeah, you got a huge move down. This is not a chart of the XLE, it's a chart of the XLE versus the S P five hundred. So perhaps I should go back and talk about that for a second. The blue in the background, this, is the actual price of the S&P 500. Okay? This chart, this is a chart of the ratio, and it's the same for all of these. It's the ratio between the industry group that we're looking at and the overall index of the S&P 500. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, like we said, some of these industry groups do better under certain circumstances, and some of them do worse. 
So what you want to know is which industry group is the best performing versus the, the overall over time, right? And you want to be in the industry groups. If you, if, if you could do this, which we can't in TSP, but if you could do it, you would want to be in the industry groups within the, the, the S&P 500 that are, are doing better than the other industry groups of the 11, Right. And be out of those others. And be out of the 11. Yeah. Right. Be out of the ones that, yeah. So, so the XLV. It's, it's, it's like what we do with the TSP, right? If we want to be in CNS or, you know, in the, in the stock funds when they're going up. Right. And you want to be out of the other ones when you're going down. Right. It's just similar. Same idea. Yeah. It's just that what we did was kind of look behind the curtain. Yeah. That's, that's all. So, yeah, I really, I really like this chart. Uh, Jerry always gets a gleam in his eye when he likes a chart. I like the chart. <laughs> okay. Financials. We've talked about this before. The market cannot go higher without financials. It just doesn't work that way. You can see the price going higher here. You get financials going higher here. Financials led because we started going uh, down here, even though <coughs> price didn't start going until here. So financials started coming down. And then we had a huge move down in financials uh, from the coronavirus. But now we got financials moving back positive, consistent with the price. Okay. Last, last year, at the top of three, which was here, what were financials doing? They were tanking. They had st we had started tanking down here. And if, if we got this low of the ratio of financials. <laughs> financials had already rolled over. So, th so the big difference between, this is a great example of the difference between 2020 and 2021. In 2020, financials had been going lower since 18. And then they only continued to go lower after, in, into 20, right? Now we're talking about 21. Financials are, are moving higher. Right. And they're going to continue higher. Which, which you should think of these as leading indicators, right? Yes, So definitely. for a long time, they were going down, and we were just waiting for the rest of the S&P 500 yep. to go that direction. Yep. And now that they're both coming up. Yeah, we're in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. It, we were... Especially considering historically, financials are always a big indicator for the rest of the S&P 500. You have to have financials to drive the market. I have mean, to. you say that based on historical data. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not making that's that That's not Jerry's opinion. <laughs> no, yeah. no. No, I just want yeah. to point that out, right? That's right. not just Jerry saying, oh, that's what happens. No, it's... No. Usually when Jerry says that, it's because yeah. there's some a bunch of data. Yeah, well, if at, at a minimum, you can look at this chart, and you can see the, the trend of the financials... Is driving it. Is, is driving it, right? And, and financials are going lower as the market's going sideways, right? But yeah. then it, it, it tanks with everything else, which is fine. Um, but the, the point of it is which was the point of the sort of the question of the show. Mm -hmm. This is the high that we're looking at from last year. Yep. And now we're here. Mm, wait. So we're, we're worried about rollover, but we shouldn't as much based right. on these indicators. Now we're here. So, yeah, people are kind of freaked out and they're saying we're, we're going to roll over. Could, could we get, um, you know, something like that? Yes, we could. <laughs> and it would do something like this. And it would still be within the range. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And it would just continue to go higher. Yeah, it would continue to go higher. Yeah. I, I am absolutely not looking for something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not happening. I'm not, it's not that I'm not looking at it. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. It, 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 anything's possible. but It's not probable. It's not likely. It's not likely to happen. Okay, industrials, same same thing. Moving higher, price is moving higher, moving down when the price is consolidating, collapses, moves higher as the price is moving higher into 21. It's, it's almost the same thing. And in industrials, commercial vehicles, trucks, trucking, delivery services, heavy construction, aerospace, I mean, railroad, airlines, like all this stuff that's big, big money. Those big money things are what drives the market higher. And that's definitely what, what we're, we're seeing right there. Right now, yeah. Yeah. 
So keep in mind, this is not that we have not shown a 10 day moving average, mm -hmm. right? I'm not, this is macro. Very macro. Yeah. This 15 is, years. Yeah. This is, this is, uh, this is definitely macro. It's not, it's not the 10 day but moving average. But that's what average. you have to do, right? I mean, we, yeah. we talk about that, you know, we always try to remember that this may be the first time you've ever seen our show, or it may be the, how many shows we have, 30th or 40th time. Yeah. Um, the, the point is, is that, you, you can't just look at the 10 day moving average. That's right. why we look at 10 day, 50, 50 200. We also back up to 15 year, yep. six month, three month, one year. We're looking at all those, right? I mean, it, yeah. if you don't, then let somebody else do it <laughs> for you. you but you, you got to look at it. You, ha you, you have to, um, you have to get as many perspectives as you can. And then at some point, you, you know, you can't have analysis paralysis, right? right. You, ha you have to make a decision. Um, and you, ha you have the indicators that you like. I mean, I like certain indicators. There are other guys that watch the show and are on Facebook and stuff. That yeah, they have their they, indicators they have their that indicators they like. They have a stuff. comfort factor yeah, with them. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, that's, and they may have done very well with those indicators in the past, and that's fine. Um, and they might do great now and in the future. That's, that, that's great. You have to do what enables you to sleep well at night, right? right? And, and what, um, what makes sense to you. Because if because if not, you don't know where you are, right? In in right. so which is actually what if you watch CNBC and Bloomberg and you know all of these kind of um, media channels, whether it's on the internet or it's on TV or yeah. whatever, they drive that fear factor because that's great news, oh, that's yeah. great media, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we, you can't live in that world yeah. and sleep at night, right? You can't. And so having these kind of left and right limits and these, these kind of, you know, the, these are indicators I feel comfortable with and, and, and I'm going to go with this kind of way of doing it so that I don't really stress when I wake up in the morning, right? right? Or right. when I go to bed at night. Right. I, I mean, I, I, would, I would love to get on one of those shows one time, to be honest, on, on CNBC. I mean, I, I, I watch it. I watch it all the time. We would have a watch party. Yeah, we could have a watch party. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> be a lot of drinking games going on. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, to be honest, though, I mean, I, I like to think you will be one day, like when your when your day yeah, job's perhaps. gone. Yeah. But the point is, is like it would be like bringing on Uber to talk about taxi cabs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're the guys that are going to tell you. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a worn out analogy, but. Uber and taxi cabs, like you couldn't have convinced people that taxi cabs would go away. Yeah. And in big cities, they haven't. But the point, yeah, I was just down in, um, you know, Florida. There wasn't a taxi cab to be found, but I could yeah. get an Uber at any yeah. time of the day. Oh, yeah. yep. And I knew who was showing up. I knew that I was paying the right price. The point is, is like this whole disruptor thing, right? Where we're not saying what the average person is saying. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, th that's because we're not ba we're not basing this on fear, <laughs> you know. Uh, it, it's it's more about data, and that's why we're not looking. Uh, we're not doing crystal balls, right? Yeah, let's talk about the crystal ball thing for a second. Since I since I brought it up, yeah. um, for whatever reason, and I'm, I'm honestly not sure why, because we are clearly at the beginning of a move higher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of fear. And, and crystal balling going on. and uh, In our Facebook group. In our Facebook group, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's fine. Like, I mean, I have an opinion of where I think the market's going to go, but I have very clear lines where if it, if it doesn't go in the direction that I think it's going to go, I'm okay with that. And right. as soon as it crosses that line, I'm out. I'm out. I'm, yeah, I'm switching. Yeah, whichever. Yeah, either yeah. way. Right. I, I, I have, you know, I'm human, right? Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> mostly robotic but i have a little bit in there and and i i i have a you know an opinion of where i think things are going to go and i'm going to i'm going to play that out yeah. but if it goes against me i have no problem no problem getting out well that's or getting in, in. that's investing discipline yeah or investment discipline right yeah and that that's that's not robotic that's just that you you have found a a a way a process that works for you and that's what we're trying to impart on other people whether you you buy into our process or not have a process yes absolutely. have a way to manage your at TSP the you know the, the buy and hold we, we we're going to go down you know this, yeah. this but it's it, it just doesn't it doesn't work it it works if you're lucky it doesn't work when you're not lucky, right? When when you lose fifty percent of your retirement because yeah. you bought and hold, and you're like, "Oh, it'll come back." Yeah. Well, well, we'll come back. And if you're twenty years old, <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. If you're yeah. fifty, 
you're probably not life so fine. sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, one last yeah. point on the uh, on the um, I just lost my crystal train of thought. Wall. Yeah, the crystal wall. Oh, the Facebook group. Yeah, Facebook group. So we got like nine thousand plus people, and it's probably going to be ten thousand by the end of the week or whatever. And we're extremely like perplexed by that and grateful and and but what we haven't done as great a job at, and we're going to get better at it, is is putting more content there for you folks that are that have these questions, right? Mm-hmm. Because kind of that's what's the problem for us yeah. right now is there's people that are filling in the blank. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So someone asks a question and the internet gets involved. Yeah. <laughs> right? And it's yeah. okay if the person answering the question knows what they're t- they're talking about because we see that. We see people that are like, yeah. that's not necessarily what we would do, but it's not a bad answer. Right. right? Absolutely. Right. Uh, that that happens a lot. But Unfortunately, what seems to happen more often than not is rah, 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 do this, you know, and yeah. it's like, well, where did that come from? Yeah. And unfortunately, if there's more of that than the than the than the than the yeah. other, you get people who are more confused. And yeah. we're definitely not trying to create confusion, right? Right. Um, that, that's that's really really tough. Yeah, and the, the, the tough part for us is to balance the fact that we we do have a paid service. People are paying for your analysis and for the, you know, yeah. the way we're doing all these things, we can't just put that in the Facebook group. No. Right. You know, uh, no apologies for that. No, it's not going yeah. to the Facebook group. Yeah. No. But so if you, if you want to dig deeper, you're always going to have to, to be a member of our site. We're not, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're transparent about that. But what we try to do in the Facebook group is give people a place to discuss this yes. stuff. To, exactly right. right? Exactly discuss, right. you know, if, if we were to have our way, it would be all of those people discussing technical analysis in a way that works for them for managing their TSP. Sure. Like th- th- there was one guy put up uh, a series of charts this week that showed the top in 2020 and the top in 2021 and where he got out in 2020 and why he got out at, at re- recently here in, in 2021. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's awesome. Like that is exactly what that's we what want to see want. in the group. Because it, is he based, basing that on data on real things, yeah. not just some, you know, th- you know do it this way. Right. You know, right. No, that's it's I heard Bob said do it, it was, that way. <laughs> so Bob gonna do yeah. it that Bob way. Bob around the water cooler. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's exactly what we want to generate um, conversation around technical analysis and have people throw up, hey, this is the, this is what I see in this chart. Right. This is what this is so if you extend out yeah, you know, hey, you just put up a six month chart. If you extended that to an eighteen month, it tells a different story. Yep. Like there's all this is a That's it's not a science. It's a it's a you know, it's, it's an a, art and a science. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of a science. Lot to it, right? Not a science, but there's always yeah. a little art. Um, mostly the art is in, you know, and this comes from, you know, the Intel background where you have analysis, right? Mm -hmm. But every person has their kind of artistic flair for explaining that information, that data, right? And that's your, that's your analytical opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because usually it's based on the data. It's based on facts. It's based on information. If you're basing it off of, well, this is just what I read and, you know, whatever. Right. Like, right. that's not what we're trying to promote, for sure. And, and and we probably should get back to the slides, but I I just wanted to kind of point that out for folks that maybe just started listening to the show or just joined the Facebook group. Because I think we have a lot of people in the Facebook group to watch the show because we, we, we put it in there, you know, on, on yeah. Sunday evenings. And it's important to remember that what the group is about. And the group is about not necessarily... You know, if we were trying to sell you our product, we'd be putting ads in there yeah. all the time. Yeah. If you want to buy it, you can yeah. buy it. It's buy it or not, that's fine. What we really want is a is a is a safe space. Yeah. For yeah. people to talk about managing their TSP the way we do, right? So that's why you create groups on Facebook is like like minded right. people. Right. If you're a fundamental a- a- analyst, if you if you do that, that's probably not the place for you to be. You're not going to agree with a lot of the things that we do. Yeah, you you, you probably won't. Yeah. So, so let me let me ping on that though for one second. Um, uh, I, I know a lot of people that are in our group are also in Scott Zane's group, right? The uh, Third Savings Plan is the name of his group. And he's mm-hmm. got a, a, a group called uh, TSP for Swing Traders. And, and uh, Deb Crown manages the, the first one. And I think Scott manages the second one. I was watching his video this week. And he kind of plugged us. So let me plug him back. <laughs> um, yeah. Fair is fair. Yeah, fair is fair, fair. But the, the, the thing that he said that I completely agree with is that he does fundamental analysis. We do technical analysis. The, the best, what, what happens is when his analysis agrees with ours 
And that is where we are right now. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. So if you go back and you look at his... If you get a fundamental person and a technical person to agree, you got got magic. Yeah, yeah. So so it's interesting because I I meant to ping him and I haven't... Sorry, Scott, if you're watching, but I haven't haven't done it yet. Uh, He... he, um, His projected earnings are exactly consistent with what our Elliott Wave model is showing right. and, and, the, and the sector, where the sectors are going and all that. So on the fundamental side, on his site, and on the technical side, on our site, we are saying the same thing. Yeah. Which, which should make you feel a lot more comfortable if you're still in the stock, and if you're still in stock uh, yeah. Yeah. funds, right? And again, this is not the 10-day moving average. Right. We're, we're gonna, we need, you need to give it some breathing. Yeah, room, yeah. Right? Uh, so yeah, let's get back to the charts. All right, that was a good, good diversion. Though. I like that. That's my job. <laughs> I'm here to divert. <laughs> my favorite XLK. That's a nice one. Yeah, this is almost as useless as the other one that was as <laughs> as uh, all over the place. What was that? I can't remember which yeah. one that was. Communications. Yeah. Communications. Yeah. Um, tech is awesome. It's always awesome. Obviously, right? It it drives the market whether the market's going up or down. <laughs> it's like. Is it, I mean, if you owned Apple, Amazon, you know, it's the fangs, right? If you looked at those other charts, they look wild and crazy. And you look yeah. at this one, and you're like, oh, well, it's yeah. pretty Tech drives much... higher no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, so as as you would expect, we had this huge 34%, 35% move lower, but tech moved higher because tech saves us, right? Uh yeah, so if, if you had, you know, we don't have the capability of doing this in the TSP, obviously, but, you know, if you're, if you're doing something else, right, yep. you would be, you would be out of those other sectors yep. and doing your best to get into tech while all that was going on, and you still would have made money yes. while so many other people would have been losing. Yeah, so to, to that point, uh, I don't want to go into this much, but I'm going to just show it. You see the S&P, the blue line, is moving higher as the tech, the ratio of tech to the S&P is flattening out at best. So going forward, does tech roll over from here? I don't know, but it, it doesn't look as strong as it did. But it could flatten out, right? I mean, it can be, uh, get the, get the pen working, man. Dude, the pen, <laughs> come on, bro. Jesus. Pen. Okay. I mean, can it do something like that? Maybe. As, as price, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, I think it's really interesting that, uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah. Cause you got, you got this high and and you get a reversal right here, even as the S&P is going higher. So, you know, I, I would not, on, on a short-term basis, I'm not buying tech. Right now. Not, no. But you definitely keep an eye on it because it does follow. Oh, yeah. Tech, tech rocks. Like it doesn't you can't, follow. It drives. It, right. it drives. It yeah. definitely drives, yeah. If, if tech does not end up being the driver going forward, um, I don't know. You better look at solar and... and uh, I mean, I don't know what else, because if, if tech starts rolling off relative to the S&P overall, uh, it's going to be interesting to see who picks up the, the slack. Who gets the baton? Baton. It's probably not going to be consumer staples. <laughs> I can tell you that. Yeah. So as you can see, so consumer staples, what is it's that? It's not where you want to be. Tire. Well, so there are some cool things in here. Tires, brewers, food retail, and, and wholesalers. You get, you get tobacco. Wait, and did you just say beer drink. is a staple? You said brewers, right? Brewers. So beer is a staple. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and so is distillers. <laughs> coffee. Is coffee, coffee in there? Of course coffee. All that stuff is I in there. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Because you know what? You need that. You got to have it. Yeah. So whether the market's going up or down, yeah. you're, you're buying those things, right? Yeah. I mean, when so, so here's the thing about ratios. When the market's going down, you're still buying cigarettes if you smoke. Mm-hmm. If you don't smoke, you're definitely buying bourbon, I hope, because <laughs> Talkton Creek will, will I appreciate it if I, I put this up. I have not bought there. any less coffee before right. or after the pandemic. Right. <laughs> I mean, you you got to have coffee. you gotta, you got to have your thing. They're staples. Yeah. Right. Right? So if the market is going down overall and staples are staying flat, then 
the ratio shows staples going higher, right? That's how it works. That's mm. how ratios work. Mm -hmm. So, so when we look at the chart, when the since we know that tech drives the market higher, tech is driving this, which means staples is going down, which makes sense, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're not buying toilet paper when you could be buying Amazon. Right. I mean, that's that's kind of the bottom line. When the market's going sideways, Staples does much better, right? When the market tanks, Staples goes up <laughs> because everybody needs toilet paper. Yeah. Where are we right now versus where we were last year? Here's the top last year. Here's the top right now. We had Staples moving higher, and now we have Staples totally tanking. Which should give us an indicator that yeah. we're moving up. Yeah. When you move move behind the curtain, it's uh, <laughs> it tells you everything you want to know. Real estate shouldn't surprise anybody. <laughs> Commercial real estate, you got so a REIT, real estate investment trust. That's what REIT is. R E I T. Is, is REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. It's real estate services, specialty REITs, industrial and office REITs, residential REITs, hotel and lodging, uh, retail REITs, all these kinds of things. If you're driving around your town and you wonder why all this space in the malls are empty and how can they still be in business, the answer is they're not. <laughs> they're getting clobbered right now. Uh so, as as the as the S and P price goes higher, and, and and the real estate price is going lower, it's it's a it's a rough rough environment for real estate. Hopefully, that's a bottom. I hope, and I I get a little bit of optimism because of that week right there. We'll see. Because that week, week right here means there's there's some uh, there's some sort of buying pressure a little bit. <laughs> it's not a lot, but it's a little bit. Let's hope hope for the best for my friends in real estate. Utilities, same kind of thing. Nobody invests nobody invests in utilities when the stock market's going up. When the stock market's going down to sideways. Everybody wants to be in utilities. When the stock market's going up, nobody wants to be in utilities. Okay. The market's going higher. It's not going lower. Healthcare. This is actually kind of an interesting one. It's all over the place, but we had a huge move higher right here during the pandemic because everybody thought healthcare, like, you know, it, it's it's medical supplies and biotech and medical equipment and pharmaceuticals and healthcare providers and all that and it, and it had a huge move higher during COVID at the beginning, but once we got past the initial part of COVID, all the things that people were not spending money on, right, colonoscopies and like, you know, any anything that had to do with healthcare, was tanking. Versus, tech that was driving the S and P higher. Market's going higher. It's not going lower. Consumer discretionary, autos, auto parts, toys, retail, recreation, footwear, all, all discretionary things that you don't really have to have. You don't have to buy the $400 Nikes. Does Nikes cost $400 now? I, th I think they do. <laughs> I mean, I've never <laughs> bought a $400 pair of Nikes, but um, my kids tell me that, that there are things like that, and I... Tell them you'll never have a pair. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so what does it Jesus matter? <laughs> yeah, there's something with like Air Jordans and Nikes and like, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know. In Ingrid showed me a $500 pair of Converse the other day that looked scuffed up and like nasty. And I know probably some people. Can were, you lift in them? Converse? Were they, are they like the $500 Converse? Yeah, they're flat. Yeah, they're like. They're yeah. Lifting shoes. Yeah, $500. You need those $500 lifting shoes. Bro. Man, if they give me a couple <laughs> extra pounds, I'd take it. 
<laughs> if it helped me squat more, I'd pay <laughs> 500 more. bucks. <laughs> I'm just saying, the mark, the, the consumer discretionaries, as the market is going higher, because consumer discretionaries tends to go lower, um, it's flat, and, and then it moves higher as, as we're at the beginning of a, of a move. I, I am completely with JC. We are at the, not the very beginning, but closer to the beginning than the middle of a, of a move higher. Uh, so major takeaways from, from our uh, jibber-jabbering about all of this. <clears throat> when you pull behind the curtain, you get sectors that make up the S&P 500. Okay, the sectors that generate price expansion are back to leading the charge. Okay, the defensive sectors are back to lagging. So watch the charts or the ratios because they can forecast the long-term trend changes. Okay, and and watch the sector charts because they help us confirm our long-term Elliott wave counts. I like it. Let me just go back to the very. Oh. This is a lot of finger singing. Okay. Because why? The long-term Elliott wave count. This was three. This is four. We're now at a new high, which is fine. Is this new high similar to this new high? A and I think we've Made the shown argument. that our opinion is no. No. Okay. <laughs> Oh no! You you went too far. Went too far. Can I you just went off. Up? Oh, what what happened? We went back to the cameras because the, the slideshow just and, went. All right, get the slideshow. All right. So, Sarah got happy fingers. I got yeah yeah yeah. I that was the longest slideshow that I think I've done. There was like forty slides in there. Yeah, and the uh, amazing thing is, is we're still about the same time yeah. as we normally are. We always try to keep it uh, less than an hour. Hoping that, uh, I mean, Joe Rogan goes for three hours. How would we even do that? Dude, I, I, I would love to go have a beer with that guy. <laughs> Not comparing myself I to Joe Rogan, though. Oh, God. Trust me. Jesus, no. um, uh, but I think that our show could make you more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Joe would agree. Uh, yeah. Joe would be like, my show's not going to make you any money. It's going to make me lots of money. Right. Uh, all right, guys. Hopefully you got a lot of good information uh, this week. On the show, as always, if you did... Please share it with your friends. Yep. You know, if you know folks at work or whatever that, you know, are involved in TSP, if you have family members that are in the military, we're really making a push to kind of get to to folks in the military because we don't we don't really have a, a mechanism yet really to, to do that. Most of our network, if you will, even though we're both former military, is in the federal government. So if you have family members or friends or anything that are in the military, because this is the sort of stuff I wish I had when I was a private. Yeah. 18 years old, coming in the Army, if somebody would just said, hey, knucklehead, uh, you know, go follow this guy yeah. and move your stuff when he moves it, right? Yeah. I would have been a millionaire long before, you know, 40, yeah. right? I, I got a call uh, this week from uh, a Navy lieutenant at Penn State, and I'm going to be setting up a, a program, no, program but at least a, a, a call with their midshipmen at, mm. at their rotc unit just to give them some uh, to, to insight yeah yeah how important this is right yeah, yeah. yeah. so if, you, if the the young the young guys girls you know ladies it it's uh the younger because your daughter's at penn state right and yes. uh yeah, naval rotc state. yeah 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 and son is enlisted in the navy yes yes so he will have to salute Aviation her electrician. yes yes oh she knows it <laughs> and so does he unfortunately <laughs> It's it's going to be quite the family business as we keep rolling forward. Yeah, yeah. that's fun, yeah. though. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. If you have any questions, hit us up on the comment section in Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you catch the show. Very good. And we appreciate you watching. Peace. And we're out. Bam. Jerry doing the air drums. Yeah. <laughs>